Today is a, a unique day. Um, it is a day we are going to have uh, our discussions because uh, at LLB3, we need to engage students, uh, especially in free discussions, uh, group discussions, debate, so that uh, we see how we can uh, apply human rights to the real life situation. This is uh, to open a conversation between the universalism and cultural relativism. That men are free to choose to do what they please with their body. The fact that you find that, uh, like in America alone, there are so many abortions that are taking place every other day. And um, uh, okay, the question then, okay, for them is the, de the debate as to when does life begin? Does it uh, begin at, at conception, or does it, or does it begin some time after con after concept uh, after conception? So you find that uh, as um, as as women mostly in the in the Western world right now in Africa, as they proclaim this, um, their it is a practice that is becoming very detrimental to, to to society. So, okay, for me that is one of the issues that I really have with uh, this uh, with the concept of what I would say the Western um, uh, regime of, um, of of human rights or the Western culture of human rights. Yeah. Good. Great. Yeah, maybe on 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 a rejoinder on uh, on Bashir's contribution. You know yes. that you are very well versed on issues of culture. Mm. Uh, I've, I've not investigated or I've not researched, but uh, there's uh, this notion that um, that homosexuality is somehow um, practiced. Somehow, I mean, was practiced in African culture. Sometimes we hear people talk about. Uh, the Kabaka of uh, and I don't know, I can't remember which particular Kabaka it was. Okay, as somebody who is uh, as well vast, diverse culture, maybe could you shed some light on on allegations? Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. thank you so much, Phoebe. Yeah, um, yes, you are making a contribution to the discourse of uh, Mr. Bashir. Eh? Uh, on the cultural relativism and uh, when Bashir uh, said it clearly that uh, Uganda and Kenya are not comfortable with uh, certain practices that are coming handy with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, under freedom uh, such as homosexuality, gay marriages and uh, other things uh, like um, LGBTI, X, whatever. Uh, this is a question of universalism. But uh, your interjection uh, with the observation, uh, which of course I don't have uh, neither the practical documentary evidence to show that uh, one of the Kabakas or some Kabakas, I don't know, uh, had got uh, the practice. Uh, within maybe the monarchy or the royal family. Uh, well, <laughs> when we say something is a cultural practice and something is just uh, abnormality, you know, there, every culture has got some abnormal practices. And you will always find also what we call uh, dubious characters or defiant behavior in every society across the board. But if in a society, in a community, let's say of 1,000 members, and one member has got a dubious behavior, would we uh, make a ruling that that behavior now becomes a community behavior? This is where we differ, because uh, universalism is about making it universal, making it bind on all of us. That is where it is. But uh, cultural relativism is comfortable with uh, such kind of sporadic practices that were not rules, they were not accepted by the people as uh, the rule, the mode of life. 
Why? Because when we talk about uh, morality, or uh, let us say general ethics, we find that people can accept a certain behavior, but people cannot accept even a certain behavior. And that is again out of uh, general uh, public consensus, which of course you need to assess and uh, tally and come up with the statistics. Um, could you kindly come back again? Abdenego? Yes. Yeah, please. I'm saying Repeat, yeah. The common sort of humanity makes the ideas non parochial and imbues them with universal qualities. But in order for the observation to have universal appeal, human rights must be understood to derive from a particularized apprehension of natural law and requires the existence of essential so social institutions commonly found in civilizations with liberal sensibility. The fact that individual rights and freedom were first comprehensively articulated and formalized as principles of governance and conduct by Western societies is not enough to make them objectionable to other cultures as long as experience has shown them to be salutary to individual and societal progress. By way of example, the idea that a man can fly and hence the invention of modern air travel is of Western origin. The benefits from air travel are unquestionable. Should non-Westerners now refuse to fly because the idea and the subsequent invention are Western? That's a question. Are we also to reject the global use of Western medicine because they may be incompatible with traditional observances in, our, in other cultures? That's a question. Very good, Meshak. That is now loud and clear, and uh, it is a, an open debate, please. Eh? Yes, very clear actually. Yeah. But uh, for Meta, what he is saying, I don't know if he's agreeing with that statement or if he is agreeing with that statement. However, what he is saying that there are some good things from Western civilization. Uh, for example, the invention of uh, cars, technology, and we have accepted. So why are we refusing certain aspects of, of their also cultures? That's what I, how I understood. But for me, what I'm thinking is that culture must be, you know, customized. We pick what is good from that culture for us. For example, medicine is good, vaccination is good, cars are good. Uh, and we reject what is not really fitting into our setting. For example, uh, what we have just discussed, sexuality and so on and so on. So we should not accept everything as uh, wholesome. We should dissect, open it, dissect and pick what fit is in our setting. Thank you. Good, 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 Rashid. In the, sir, in the words of Robert Cohen, I'd say, to adequately promote human rights, a carefully study of the attitudes, beliefs, institutions, and practices of the different cultures is indispensable in order to find ways in which local precepts can be applied to reinforce international human rights standards. The reconciliation mm -hmm. of international mm -hmm. human rights standard with local cultural values will not undermine or weaken international norms. Rather, it will enrich and reinforce them. Um, cultural diversity has proved an asset to the development of universal norms. Moreover, worldwide support for human rights is likely to enjoy if human rights draw on elements from all cultural traditions. Nancy, um... I believe everybody, every participant has understood what uh, Nancy has, uh, has shared about uh, FGM and uh, she's referring to circumcision, whereas FGM is referring to mutilation. Now, there are two different this distinction between circumcision and mutilation. Mutilation is understood from a very negative context in the sense that it affects the female hygiene and female health. So the argument brought by, let us say, human rights activists was that uh, cutting the woman private part uh, in uh, that manner is mutilating uh, the organ 
but also it is inducing uh, some kind of uh, uh, health problems. Uh, and uh, they try to relate it also to the dignity of the woman uh, because they see it as something forceful and something that has been put there by customs and traditions of the practitioners. Whereas uh, on the other ground, you are talking about male circumcision. Male circumcision, uh, according to Nancy, is arguably acceptable and uh, why is it not also being considered mutilation? So that uh, if they have to abolish it, they have to abolish on both. Um, there, are, uh, there are debates around this, and I want uh, other participants to intervene on this. Eh? Uh, is somebody willing to yes, comment sir. on us, please? Now, let me just respond to Nancy. Yep. She has made comparison. Whereas male circumcision, whether you circumcise or not, it doesn't have any effect. If you circumcise well and good, if you don't circumcise, there is no problem. It is the same thing. If you circumcise, there is no medical problem which will come up. I'm talking about from medical perspective here. But female. Thank you, Thank you Dr. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But female, the moment you circumcise, and you know circumcision has got so many different levels, even the minor people, some, some people call it stage one. Even the stage one we see every day, ladies coming with urinary tract infections, uh, menstrual problems, delivery issues, recurrent infections, and something called chronic pelvic pain. Pain which nobody knows. You do a scan, you do everything, the pain, nobody knows where it's coming. It has been attributed to uh, female genital mutilation or circumcision, whatever you call it. Uh, from medical perspective, both of them are the same. We are just worried that the moment you get to the clitoris of a female, that is the beginning of several problems. So I don't want Nancy actually to compare the two. For male, it's actually an organ, even if you remove it, nothing will happen. But for me, female is completely different. It's completely different. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I know that you so let me intervene and respond to Bashir. Yes, uh, yes. I know very well that uh, female genital females, but place yourself on that village woman who was brought up believing that female genital mutilation is a rite of passage norm so in order for you like to know that this cultural norm is like negative the way you're saying the universal human rights like uh, in uh sexuality rights that you're free to choose your sex if you want to be homosexual that's you. so for these particular cultures a right of passage and uh well, if, can i say something about this oh uh, sorry nancy have you finished can we the now side, the side, the ahead. yeah okay. can i can i go ahead yes yes please i want us to look at the basis of doing a uh, female genital mutilation vis-a-vis -vis male circumcision uh, male circumcision, if you check the communities that were practicing male circumcision, it had everything to do with uh, hygiene. And uh, that's why you find almost all the communities that were not living around the lake and uh, the rivers practicing male circumcision in order to, uh, to, to observe hygiene. Later on, it uh, became part and parcel of uh, the rite of passage. What was the rationale behind female genital mutilation? It's all about domination of women. That uh, the culture thought that the clitoris then gave the women opportunity to, uh, to fulfill their sexual desire. So in order to control them and dominate them, chop off the clitoris and then let women be without the control. And then they become just object of sex so that men can have sex with them anytime you want but they do not have control over their own sexual pleasure. So female genital mutilation, other than the dangers that come with it, it's equally a, a weapon of domination that you use to dominate women. Because clitoris is one of the most sensitive sexual organ in a woman uh, uh, anatomy. 
remove it from them. You are doing that in order to control them so that they do not have any pleasure. So we need to check the rationale behind these things. Why were we doing the male circumcision? And why was female genital mutilation being done? Thank you so much, Salim. Um, Nancy, do you want to, to defend yourself? Actually, I think even the government is trying to make efforts on Wanainti to understand that female genital mutilation is something that is uh, negative because actually currently uh, the secondary students uh, the Maasai culture and it has a lot of Maasai narratives and, and they've also dropped in the issue of female circumcision about to like uh, make the, the women like uh, to look just like objects so I think maybe that is the way the government tends to think that by educating the cultural and also educating the students in general in schools. But then I was just, um, if we're comparing uh, our cultural norms with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights so that we see whether is this a human right or with it or we tell them that this is not right i know it's not right no nancy sorry nancy this is our culture yes but an african culture generally but say culture not even generally. ourselves but, um, in africa we have recognized it as a bad culture and we are actually sorting it out you remember 10, know, 15 africans, years ago 10 15 years ago uh, female circumcision was just like a normal thing but now even if it is done, it is being done secretly and it's a criminal, actually. It's a criminal activity. It is no longer a cultural activity. Actually, other than criminal, Masir, other than being criminal, if you check the communities that practice female genital mutilation and you check their perception towards women, they regard women as children. They do not regard women as adults, as people whose views can be considered. Check all of them. All of them treat women as uh, inferior to men, uh, as children. Actually, some of them, I wouldn't want to name uh, cultures and uh, communities, but some of them, as I interact with them, they even refer to women as children. So the communities that were practicing this FGM were doing that uh, to perpetuate domination of women so that women continue being inferior. Even electing women in those communities is a problem. Wow. Yeah, Never you, you, to you, land here. you are right. You, you are right, Salim. Uh, the issue of women, generally in Africa, there's a big issue. We need to move, we need actually to interrogate ourselves. Generally, in Africa, the place of women, but in even in Africa and in East Africa and in Kenya, different communities, uh, you know, uh, in terms of grading, uh, some communities actually it is low in terms of women, others are doing something. So I agree with you, uh, the issue of women in Africa, in my community, let me just tell you an example. Uh, there's a big debate, you know, there are conservatives and there are liberals, even in my community, we say that we have to interpret the Quran, what he says literally, which says that women should sit behind and men should lead the way in terms of uh, uh, in terms of leadership, in terms of education. But there are those who are coming up and saying that we need to interpret these things literally in 2021. In 2021. And what we are saying is that uh, women actually should have equal rights with men. So you are right. Women issue is a completely difficult and different debate. Maybe 2020, 2050, 2045, uh, things might be different, but for now things are tough in some communities, uh, women for in some communities. Uh, okay, in, in relation to, to what Meshak um, uh, said earlier, I completely agree with, um, with the citation you quoted from Cohen, but my only worry is, um, as Cohen says, that uh, that culture is uh, is integral in issues of human rights. Then, if we go that direction, 
would we, would we still be having a universal kind of human rights? I don't think it should exist. That's my my thinking. Okay, I support cultural relativism. In that uh, every culture should be allowed to uh, to practice their, their, their culture, and uh, we should not judge basing on our own values because that is the norm. Everybody, the, the European came and uh, they judge our culture, and we Africans have also borrowed from them, and we're judging our own selves. We should uh, actually the first thing that we should do: people should be educated so that every everyone can have his own way of reasoning, and then we see what is right and wrong. And we value, we, we look at uh, our cultures and we base them on uh, what is good for, them, not what is what is what is being uh, uh, criticized or what what is it that it benefits us? What can we borrow from our culture that that benefits us? And uh, from what our, my colleagues have just uh, said uh, on uh, on a uh, female uh, female uh, submission or uh, FGM. I can say that this is a this is a this is a practice that is uh, outdated and uh, somehow uh, it was being imposed on uh, women. And uh, the best thing is uh, something that someone can make his own decision. And even if it is like maybe circumcision nowadays, even for male circumcision, even those cultures that were not practicing it, uh, you are allowed to make your own decision, not based on culture. To decide to go to the hospital, even if the culture is not the culture is not practicing that uh, that kind of uh, of, of that kind of you can make your own decision to go to the hospital and uh, and and allow yourself to circumcise or not. Not being forced to do uh, even for FGM. If a woman can decide to have her body mutilated, is it is her body. And uh, as much as she is educated and as much as she's making the judgment out of her free will, I don't think uh, she can. She should be told not to do so, or uh, it should be put on a, or it should be criminalized so that uh, if based on your on, on your decision as an individual, you can do. That, that is my contribution, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much, Willie. So <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Willie's that funny. Willie's laughing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Willie's really, that funny what because... Funny? Yeah. That's funny because the, the, I wouldn't have any problem if an adult woman walks into the mutilator to have her body mutilated, that would be okay. But practically, the women that we are talking about, that's why we are not calling it women uh, genital mutilation. It's called female, because the female that is targeted is actually the young female. is a child, a minor, who cannot consent, who is being presented there. So somebody is forcing their culture on the children. Because if I give birth to my child, why should I force my culture onto that child? Because culture is a way of life. My child can choose another way of life. I do not have a right over my child to force my culture onto the child. So uh, while you are right in terms of uh, if a woman chooses what she wants to do with her body, that's okay. But then you need to look at the practicality of it that what is being done is actually being done to the minors. Another rejoinder that I wanted to add to what Phoebe was saying, which I agree with, is that in the, in the view of the developing uh, customary law and customary rights, then there is a need to re have a relook at UDHR. That one I agree with uh, the preposition of Phoebe. Because by the time UDHR was being made, majority of African countries, if not all, were not nations. And therefore they were not member to the United Nations. And therefore they were not party to the UDHR. And therefore their considerations, their positions were not taken care of. So to that extent I would agree that uh, in, the, in the development of the African customary uh, law and rights, there is a need to look at uh, UDHR to incorporate some of the things that are not repugnant to morality, that are not redundant, even uh, when it comes to matters of justice. But to what Opande is saying, I would say, insofar as the children are being subjected to that FGM, then that can't be said that women are uh, are um, freely walking into the mutilation. I mean mutilation, sorry. Thank you. Well, Salimah, I agree 100%. That is why I was saying it should be, it should not be on children. It should not be on young girls. But if it is a mother, it should be cultural. Then let them allow older women, those who are uh, feel that they should be mutilated, to go and do it freely without being compelled.
Hey, hey not hey, Willis, Willis, Willis you, you see this, uh, yeah, this, this may not turn well with what uh, Nancy was saying, that according to the traditional practice, it was an initiation, initiation into adulthood. And if it is uh, a rite of passage, how do you now relate it to the adults? And uh, you allow it for those who are happy with it, and uh, it is, uh, okay, it is uh, one who does what he wants with, uh, with his body or with her body. So uh, we need to still be complying to the traditions as a requirement. Yes, that is, uh, yeah. that is why we have those cultures which were practicing that uh, kind of habit. They have uh, they have adopted an alternative way of uh, of 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 rite of passage, as you say, and uh, it is not a must that a woman should be mutilated. And you will find that even in the Pokot culture, young girls are now taken to uh, an institution. They are taught. It's just about it is a, something like a, something about mentalities. It's so what you have you, you have put and uh, you believe. So if you believe that. By cutting a part of your body, that is a rite of passage. You can you can you can change the mentality into another thing. So that that is what I think is being done now, and uh, most culture cultures are adapting. So, so I was saying it's about mutilating the body. It's you know it's it's not bad. And you know one thing that we are not we we will not like we'll tend not to accept and we'll tend to believe that uh, if one is educated that this thing is. There, Yeah, set up your microphone, please. You are breaking. People who are even living outside the country in the West, they will transport their children back when the children reach around the age of 12, 13 years for circumcision. Then they take them back again to the Western world. So this is somebody who's well, well, well educated and is still practicing the same thing. The child has been born outside there. The child for female generation, they carry them back once they're, they're killed. And it's like a normal thing. So when the children grow in the family, they tend to think that that is something that has to continue. So it's something that is very, very hard to escape. Yes. Yeah, I just want also to make a rejoinder on uh, just my last maybe comment. Please that, come on. Uh, Everybody has mentioned on that one. This one is not something happening to adult females. It is unheard of. It is rare, especially in my background. It is almost impossible mm -hmm. to see a lady coming or being taken for circumcision above 18 years. I've never had it in my lifetime. Never. Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. happening even is that children are suddenly mentioned. It is happening to children. And the main thing is that children are being smuggled wherever they are not allowed, like Nancy is mentioning, in European countries they are very strict and you can penalize criminal activity uh, brought to a country where it is possible to do it. But even adults should not be allowed because it will be, a, if the mother has done it and uh, the law in this country allows for a female to present herself for genital cutting, she will do it to her, her children also. So this thing uh, should not be given a, a, a chance to, to be practiced as a culture. Thank you.